Hello everyone, and welcome to the Uncommon Commander. There's been a bit of a pause on new videos since the holidays as I've had some outside things going on, but I'm back and the next video should be coming out not too long after this one. So thanks for hanging in there. Today we've got a commander that I've been attempting to build for a long time. I've made about six different versions of this deck, four of which were just to make this video, but I promised this one to Toby Cool, and I'm a man of my word. Or maybe that's Toby Cool? Uh, sorry, I guess I'm not really sure how to pronounce your username. Anyhow, this commander was challenging to build, but also very rewarding. So many trials later, here's Archangel Avacyn slash Avacyn the Purifier. Dun dun dun! Archangel Avacyn costs 3 and 2 white and has a 4-4 four, four body with some pretty sweet abilities. Those would be Flash, Flying, and Vigilance. She also has, when Archangel Avacyn enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of the turn. And when a non-angel creature you control dies, transform Archangel Avacyn at the beginning of the next upkeep. Once transformed, this lovely, kind Archangel becomes a much more... Mm, misguided Avacyn the Purifier. As the Purifier, she has a 6-5 flying body, and when this creature transforms into Avacyn the Purifier, it deals 3 damage to each other creature and each opponent. I would also like to mention the rules for commander damage between her two sides. She's still the same permanent, so they share commander damage. We're gonna smack some face there, so that's really nice. There are a lot of ways to go with this commander. We could go heavy on flicker effects to really abuse the indestructibility, and then swing in with an army that refuses to die. Or we could have gone aristocrats heavy, burning everyone out like a black deck would. But I decided to split the difference with more of a self-sacrifice shell, which serves as a trigger to go from defense to offense, and turn Avacyn into a beefy board wipe, purifying everything else and having Avacyn swing in as a Voltron massive haymaker to purify my friends with. Everything needs to be pure, and the only thing that is pure is Avacyn. They must die. Whew. Ultimately, this was a style choice. Change it as you see fit. In our early turns, and I'm using the word early loosely, we're going to be ramping. We've got a good bit of ramp in here on a pretty average mana curve, but we're going to be okay with ramping all the way through turn number four. That said, the earliest we can get Avacyn out is turn three, but that requires a specific card. You'll see that one later. For now, we've got Soul Ring, Mind Stone, Boros Locket, Captain Lannery Storm, Commander Sphere, Worn Power Stone, Smothering Tithe, and Solemn Simulacrum. We're running a lot of cards that can be sacrificed here, or that generate other permanents that can be sacrificed. Partially, this is in order to gain card advantage later with things like the Locket, but there is another card in the deck that enjoys all of this sacrificing, but we'll get to that card later too. A non-ramp spell that we have is Expedition Map. I'm listing it here because it still finds you a land, and there are some decent ones to find in this deck. In fact, you could search for Myriad Landscape with it, then it kind of is a ramp spell. Okay, we've built our ramp up. Next, we'll want to play it by ear, and either cast Avacyn or put something out to sacrifice. To that end, we've got a bunch of self-sacrificing creatures. For protection and evasion for Avacyn, we've got Elseed of Life's Bounty, and the older, better, and somehow less expensive version, Benevolent Bodyguard. We also have Selfless Spirit. He doesn't quite sync up with Avacyn's timing, but can still prove useful to either trigger her or to save the rest of your board when he's not the one triggering her. For additional ramp, we have Brood Birthing, Generator Servant, and Burnished Heart. Remember how I mentioned that we can get Avacyn out on turn 3? Generator Servant is the means to that end. Some removal comes from the Self-Sacrifice cards Keening Apparition, Ronum Unicorn, and Remorseful Cleric. The final Self-Sacrifice card we have is Magus of the Wheel, who can fill both your graveyard and your hand at the same time. There are some creatures in this deck that aren't Self-Sacrificing, so for those, I've included the free sacrifice outlets, Betrothed of Fire, Ashnod's Altar, and Martyr's Cause. This brings me to card advantage. Yes, card advantage, not draw. In red and white, we're going to need to be a little creative, you see. First up is Inheritance, which is a nice payoff for sacrificing our own creatures. It also triggers with the deaths of your opponent's creatures. Dark Dweller Oracle is a sacrifice outlet itself, though not a free one. Wall of Omens can be bounced or reanimated to get multiple cards out of it, and it acts as a blocker. We're going to have a lot of opportunities to have small creatures entering the battlefield, so Mentor of the Meat can do some work. Pursuit of Knowledge requires you to skip some draws in order to draw a lot more later. Finally, we have the other wheels of the deck, Wheel of Misfortune, Reforge the Soul, and Runehorn Hellkite, 
Wheel of Misfortune is a particularly fun one, as it allows the entire table to play a bit of a guessing-based minigame. If we're chucking all these cards with our wheels and sacrificing all these creatures, we need to have some ways to get them back. I've decided to employ a couple of engines to do this. Those are Pulse Mage Advocate and the combo of Karmic Guide and Revelark. Those two become an engine when you have one or more creatures with power two or less in your graveyard and a free sacrifice outlet. We also have a potentially mass recursion spell in Marshall's Anthem. Worst case scenario is that it acts as an anthem and gets Avis and the Purifier into three-shot territory. Best case is that you use Ashnod's Altar and self-sacrificing creatures to pump your mana up, do a bunch of fun stuff, and then reanimate them all. We also have some protection cards. First up is Blessed Sanctuary, which protects the team from taking any Avacyn damage, and protects you from taking someone else's giant burn spell. It also creates unicorns when non-token creatures enter the battlefield. Speaking of entering the battlefield, we have Cloud Shift and Legion's Initiative as our flicker spells. These can save our battlefield by either resetting Avacyn and making everything indestructible, or in the case of Legion's Initiative, by blinking out all of the creatures until it's time for them to fight. And thanks to Avacyn, they'll be indestructible in that fight. Now I had better spells than Cloud Shift here, including Eerie Interlude and the strictly better Ephemerate, but I mean Cloud Shift has Avacyn on it. It, it, it just didn't feel right not including it. Uh, upgrade it if you want to. I should mention as well that if you want to change up the feeling of this deck so that you're resetting Avacyn a lot more instead of using her as a Voltron in the mid to late game like I am, you can remove some of the equipment that you'll see later and put in more flicker effects like the aforementioned Eerie Interlude and Ephemerate. Another all-star in such a build is Gift of Immortality. This isn't a flicker effect exactly, but it can be used along with a free sacrifice outlet to reset Avacyn repeatedly. Or you can put it on a self-sacrificing creature like Selfless Spirit to have an indestructible army every turn. All of this sacrificing things is great for triggering Avacyn, but there are a few other payoffs for doing it. We don't want to rely solely on Avacyn to win, after all. Outpost Siege can act as a card advantage card, and does for most decks, but... It can also be very good with the Dragon's ability to burn our opponents out as our creatures leave play. Martyr's Bond is the card I was referring to earlier when we were looking at all of our ramp spells that can sacrifice themselves. Sacrifice a Commander Sphere? Now your friend has to sacrifice their Sol Ring. Got Smothering Tithe out? Even better. Heck, even if you're just using it with your creatures, you're basically locking everyone else out of having a board presence. It's a very handy spell. Annex Harden in the Forge and Requiem Angel are here to ensure that when we sacrifice a creature, we get a creature back maintaining a nice board state. All those death triggers and we only have 10 self-sacrificers? Well, what are we supposed to sacrifice now? Tokens, my good friends. Tokens. I'll admit, I kind of got into the feeling of Avacyn and her corruption and decided to go with a fairly strong Eldrazi theme here. That begins with our Eldrazi creating engines, Extricator of Sin, Hanware Garrison, and Rapacious One. Extricator of Sin flips to become the Extricator of Flesh, a sacrifice outlet that creates three two Eldrazi horrors. No one expects the Boros Inquisition. Hanwar Garrison normally just creates boring old humans, but when it melds with a specific one of our lands, they combine to become Hanwar the Writhing Township, which also creates three two Eldrazi horrors. Rapacious One just creates little zero one Eldrazi spawn tokens. Luckily, those are very useful with their ability to self sacrifice. We also have two generators of tokens that aren't Eldrazi in nature. Those are Angel of Invention and the ever stronger Assemble the Legion. <sighs> I almost got caught up in all of this removing our own creatures fun and forgot that we need to remove our opponent's stuff as well. We've got a fair bit of that in the self-sacrifice section, but sometimes someone throws down an Angel of Jubilation like some kind of a jerk, so we need something more. Path to Exile will remove a target creature into Exile, or will ramp us. Probably better not to use it as ramp unless you really need ramp. A fun little colorless spell, Warping Whale, is here to exile something stupid, counter someone's annoying wind condition sorcery, or give us a cute little Eldrazi scion that we can sacrifice. Who's a good boy? You were! To remove artifacts and enchantments, we have Durgar Hedgemage and Return to Dust. To remove anything, we have Ablation. Like with Path to Exile, you can target your own stuff with Ablation, if desperate. It's really best used to remove things like Void Winnower or you know, Angel of Jubilation. We're actually only running two board wipes in this deck tech, in the hopes that having one in the command zone is good enough. Those are Blasphemous Act and Cataclysmic Gearhulk. The Gearhulk can also be reanimated. 
Finally, we have some of the things that turn Avacyn into a Voltron. Damage doublers. Those are the Flash Speed, Dictate of the Twin Gods, and the Normal Speed, Gratuitous Violence, Angrath's Marauders, and Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. I want to say here, if you've got the budget for it, go ahead and put Fiery Emancipation in there in place of Gratuitous Violence. It'll do quite a bit more work, as long as nobody removes it. Switching Gisela out for it will actually save you money, but Gisela can be reanimated, so there's a trade-off there. On to the final section, Land Guards. Our colorless utility ones are Hanweir Battlements, which is the card that melds with Hanweir Garrison to give us Eldrazi, Haunted Fengraf, Rogue's Passage, Spawning Bed, and Sunhome, Fortress of the Legion. Spawning Bed should really only be sacrificed if you really need those self-sacrifice creatures that it creates. Rogue's Passage and Fortress of the Legion are there, obviously for Avacyn to swing through. Our non-colorless utility lands are Sandstone Bridge, McKindy Stampede, which can come down as McKinney Mesas, and Song Mad Treachery, which can come down as Song Mad Runes. That is the only Threaten Effect card in the deck. Usually it's fine to play it as land, but I like to hold on to it if I've also got a free sacrifice outlet in hand. For color fixing, we're running the same card I run in nearly all of my non-green decks, Myriad Landscape, along with Ash Barons, Evolving Wilds, Needle Spires, Temple of Triumph, and Command Tower, I especially like Needle Spires here, because it looks like a little 2-1 creature that it turns into, but it has double strike so it kinda hits for 4, and with a damage doubler on the board, it's easy for one of your opponents to forget about it. Sucks for them when a land comes out of nowhere and hits them for 8 damage. Makes a nice little surprise blocker that way too. Our basic lands are going to be 12 mountains and 10 plains. Alright everyone, I see Baron Von Count is peeking his little game showy head out, which means it's time for our final segment, which finally is named The Final Countdown! Today, in this segment, I'm going to show you the tech that makes Avacyn turn from an angel that does a Voltron impression into one that does a whole heck of a Voltron lifetime original thingamajig. These are technical terms you wouldn't understand. Let's get into the meat of it. At number 5, I'm doing that thing that I occasionally do where I actually put two cards into it that are somehow related to each other, or make each other very good. What I'm saying is that I'm putting two cards into number 5. I'm cheating. So today at number 5, we have the Life Gaining cards, Loxodon Warhammer, and Spirit Loop. These are fantastic on their own, but especially together, as the Hammer has Lifelink, and the Spirit Loop has Fake Lifelink, which stacks with Real Lifelink. Double the healing, double the fun. For you, anyway. Looks like your opponent is going to have to go for a commander damage win. At number 4, I've put another lifelink card, but this one gets its own spot. It's special, because it's also got death touch. It's Basilisk Caller. For those who don't know, if a creature has death touch and deals non-combat damage, that damage is considered death touch damage. So with this thing on, Avacyn's little piddly 3 damage pings become a destroy effect. A true board wipe. At number 3, we've still got board wipes on the brain. This piece of equipment doesn't just board wipe though, it also buffs. Sword of Caldra is going to exile all other creatures that Avacyn hits with her 3 damage ping and turn her into an 1110 flyer, with a clear board all around her to soar in for the attack. At number 2, we have perhaps the cruelest one. I guess that depends on what gets you salty though. Crafted Exoskeleton feels custom made for Avacyn. You'll want to equip this to something after you've cast it, I'm sure. Go ahead, just make sure it's not Avacyn. Then when you cast Avacyn, equip it to her instead, killing the creature that it was attached to in the process. That'll trigger Avacyn to flip into the Purifier, dealing 3 Infect damage to everything and everyone. But now Avacyn has Infect and 8 power, and 8 plus 3 is 11. That means you can swing her in for the Infect kill, well, on the next time you get in combat anyway, but that's still pretty decent. At number one, we have the most interesting interaction in the deck, in my humble opinion. It's at its best when you have a damage doubler on the board, or ideally have equipped Avacyn with the Basilisk color. This card at number one is Scythe of the Wretched. Equip it to Avacyn, sacrifice a creature, pass the turn, steal everything. If your opponents let you make it to your next turn without board wiping, they're either not running enough board wipes or don't know when to use them. Don't correct them on this point until after you've won. Ideally, do it while you're still shaking their hand afterward. People love a know-it-all who pretends to be a good sport. 
Well, thanks for watching this episode, you few viewers who actually watch Boros videos when they come up. I hope you enjoyed it. And Toby Cool, if that's your real name, I really hope you enjoyed it too. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave a comment if you've got ideas for this deck tech, as I'd love to see what you'd come up with. Or leave a comment for the heck of it, I mean, why not? Anyway, this rinky-dink channel of mine still somehow has a backlog of decks to build, so I'm gonna go and do that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, folks.